happy friday um friday that's where i am happy thursday everybody just give me a couple minutes while i get myself set up making sure i have everything that i need because i know i have to die cut a few things I think that's it. So tonight, um, we're going to be creating these two cards. I'm using the Toll Christmas. I just want to, just going to wait a little bit. To see if anybody else shows up. Get all my stuff together. No matter how much I prepare, there's always something I end up forgetting. It never fails. Let me just grab some tape. It's up here. Excuse my arms. <sighs> Hope everybody's doing good. We'll start in a few minutes. I know it's only, <coughs> excuse me, it's uh, not seven o'clock yet. So we'll just wait a couple minutes. I was just getting myself ready and prepared because like I was saying, I'm always forgetting something. It just never fails. Let me just turn on this backlight, make it a little brighter. I don't know if that helps. If you're new, welcome. I do my videos in right here every Thursday night. And as I was saying, this week I'm working on the Toll Christmas. Um, I do have a PDF class that includes five cards you can find it on my blog across the top of my blog galfridaystamping.com and when i created with this set let me see if i can find it i started my i showcase um i usually take one stamp set a week and create cards with just that one stamp set so when i created with the tool christmas i started out with the blue with a turning him into a blue jay um and then as the days progressed he turned into a cardinal um so tonight we're going to do the cardinal and we're going to also just use the sentiment from this set and stamp with the branch. So I think we'll get started on this card first. We'll save this for later. So here's the inside. Just a little bit fancy. Just got to grab my, whoops, let me just grab my twine. So it's available and I'm not looking for it. So we're going to start with, we'll start with the 
card base and it is a traditional card base eight and a half by five and a half and it is scored at four and a quarter so we're just going to get a nice crisp line and if, it, if, if you don't know I love layers so my cards always have lots of layers so I am going to put on let me just grab my little cutter and while I have this out um, I have had a running contest in the room for member 500 and whoever is member 500 will get one of these if, as long as you're in the United States I will send this as a gift for uh, member 500 in the mail. If member 500 happens to have been invited by someone, I will also send this to the person who invites them. So just keep that in mind as um, time goes on. Okay, so we're going to put our first layer on. I just want to check my messages here so this layer I when I do my layers I do um, an eighth of an inch smaller for each layer just giving it a little bit of an edge and I've been asked why I use layers and I just like the look it just gives it a nice finished look you can't really tell too much but you know it's there when you get the card so then we have our white layer and this is five and a quarter by four so this is going to be the next layer on the card but before we put this uh, layer on we have to stamp it so what I like to do let me just grab my ruler and I don't know if I have, I'll have to put a little dot with a pen. But I know that this layer is four inches. So half of this would be two. I'm just going to put a little mark there. And I have a strip. This strip is one inch, one inches. Um, wide so I'm just going to mark it again a half inch in either direction and I don't have to worry about these lines because it's going to be covered and I just I do this so I know that it is centered I'm crazy when it comes to making sure it's centered so with that marked, I'm just going to, I'm going to put this down first. Let me grab a piece of scratch paper. And I'm using copy paper because it's nice and thin so it doesn't leave a ridge. And I'm just going to line this up on the two lines because when I stamp, I do not want to stamp on the bottom of this card. And I'm using the branch and I'm using basic gray. And we're just gonna stamp this up and start in the middle. So we're going to just stamp that down. And then we're going to just ink it up again. Move it over. And I just want to make sure that I do not hit the berries I just did. And then we're just going to do it one more time. And the reason I'm putting the paper, as you know, 
so I don't get hit the bottom of the card. So when I take this off, and we're going to do it very gently so we do not rip our layer. So we have one half of it stamped. So now we're just going to turn it over and again line it up on the lines that you just created. I'm just going to lift this up a little. Make sure it's straight. And we're going to do the same thing over again. Start in the center. I like to start in the center. Then this way, you know you won't run out of room. Just turn it so it fits nicely. And then one more time. Okay, so now your layer is stamped, and again, I'm just going to very gently take this off, and like I said, you see my lines, but you don't have to worry about them, and I'm sorry, I do not see any messages, um, so, and if you are online and you can answer any questions for me, I would appreciate it. Um, for some reason, I'm not seeing comments. Let me just see if I can pull it up on my iPad. Maybe I can see them from here. Hi, ladies. Okay. North Carolina. I'll just try to keep an eye on the messages. Like I said, for some reason, I'm not seeing them on my computer. I'm, I can see them on my iPad, but not on my computer. And I don't have anything set up. So, M, if you are here and there's any questions, and if I, if I miss them, I will get to them uh, at the end of the video. Okay, so now that this is done, we're going to color. And I am using Stampin' Blends. They're alcohol-based markers. Um, similar to Copics, but they only come dark and light. So I'm going to start with the Dark Old Olive. And I'm going to do the leaves and all I'm going all I'm really doing is going over the lines that are darkened in the stamp just making little dots now these markers do have an end that is a brush end I like the nib end because when they are fairly new they're very juicy markers and I don't like when they bleed on the paper. So I use the nib. I do The only time I use the brush is if I want to go over the whole area with a lighter color. Um, just to give it a little bit of a blend. I'm just going to hit this one here. Now you'll notice that these leaves are on top of there's a leaf in the front and one in the back I'm taking the dark mossy meadow and I'm just going putting a line right where these leaves overlap just to give it a little bit of a shadow and I'm going to take the light old olive and just fill in the rest of the leaf going over what I've already colored It helps it blend. You don't see the blend right away. 
you don't have to really go over it that much but as it dries and these colors combine together it does make it look like it's blended together a little bit more then we're going to do the stems and we're going to just the same thing we have some little branches here and i'm going to try to keep all my dark to the left so it looks like it's creating a shadow I'm going to do this for every branch. You don't have to be really fussy picky. You can if you want. But the coloring police aren't going to come get you. And I just noticed I missed this leaf here. I'm going to just color the whole thing. And this one has some branches. So this one was the dark soft suede. So now I'm going to take the light and I'm going to just fill in the rest of the branch. Okay. You see I came down, but we don't have to worry about that. Now we're going to do the berries. And I'm using dark cherry cobbler and then I'm doing light real red because I want that lighter area to look really light and all I'm gonna do is on these berries they have a little bit of a shadow that's stamped that's exactly what I'm coloring is just that shadow it'll help to make these berries look a little bit more round And I'm just going to go through every single one. I hope um, no one was in the line of that hurricane that came through down south. I had been watching the news my sister actually lives in the panhandle so that this is the light real red and i'm just coloring the rest of this berry so it just looks like it's highlighted with a lighter color same concept i don't know if you anyone here is um copic colorer i've been i was certified i'm certified copic and I've been coloring for mm, probably about seven years. Usually, I used to, and I still do for one company, I Copic Color um, DG, Digital Stamps. And they're fun. I've been with her for this company for about seven years even before I joined uh, Stampin' Up! Okay, so now all the berries are colored. Now you'll notice, you might not be able to see, but each of the berries, maybe you can see it on this one here, does have a little dot where the um, berry comes together. And I'm just going to take my black marker and just dot Put that dot back it just gives it a little bit more realistic look it's not necessary you can even when you're done take a white gel pen and also put a white dot so that's one side now we'll do the other side and we're going to do the same exact thing and I probably if I would have thought I should have done this at least one side so you don't have to sit here and watch me color.
I didn't even think. I'm sorry. Maybe we'll just finish these stems. And I'll show you how to put the rest of the card together. Because I can always finish coloring this. Okay. Alright, so we're going to pretend that I have completed coloring. So I don't keep you that long. I don't I know how precious everybody's time is. Hey Nan. The coloring please, that's for sure. Nan, I can't see. I have my iPad here. Oh wow. Where are you located, uh Janet? 97 cents, that's a bargain. Um, but Nan, if you could do me a favor. I am not seeing um, my comments on my computer. If anybody happens to ask a question, could you help them out for me? And then I can, um, you know, look at all my comments later on. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, so we're going to pretend that this side is colored. And finish up the front of this card like I said I don't want to keep everybody really late and I didn't even think to do it ahead of time <clears throat> so what I did was I took it real red and it's one and one eighth inch and then this is the most wonderful time DSP um, and this is one inch by five and a quarter. Um, just know that I will have a PDF in the room, in this room right here, tomorrow morning. I do have it all set up and ready to go. I just have to go in and edit one thing. I forgot to mark down what size circles I used for the second card. So I just have to fix that and then I'll post it in the room. Then I have some gold foil and these are a little bit bigger than a quarter of an inch. Doesn't really matter how wide they are because we are only going to show a small portion of it. And we're just going to add some glue now when you add these pieces, you want to make sure that you do not get this glue on the gold that is going to be shown on the front of your card because it changes the gold foil and you cannot get it off without leaving streaks. So you may want to keep that in mind. And we're just going to do this on both sides. Trying to get each side about the same distance. Just going to push that in a little bit. And this side too, just a tad. Hey, do. Okay, and then this is going to go on the front of the card. And we're going to go back to our ruler. I just like having everything pretty well centered. So this looks like it's about one and a quarter. So we're going to say it's just about right there. And that's where we are going to lay this down on the front of the card. Just add some glue. And can actually use the lines that are there. Just going to look at it, eyeball it to make sure it is straight. And that looks pretty good. Now when I turn it over, I can see that I have a little bit of an edge. 
So we're just going to grab this little trimmer and cut that off just so it's nice and straight. Then we're going to adhere this to the front of the card. Okay. Now we're going to do this part right here. And I have a small, this is the one, two, three and an eighth by two. And this is from the Stitch So Sweetly uh, dies. And we're just going to pop this up onto the front of the card. Uh, actually, no, we're not. Sorry about that. I am going to actually glue this down, this one, and then pop up the next layer. So we're just going to add some glue. I'll post this finished card tomorrow so that you can see <laughs> that I finished coloring. Okay. Now with the red... That is the layer that I wanted to pop up. I got ahead of myself there. Okay. And again, this one, I'll have all the measurements, but I cut this so it would fit inside the stitching. Don't push down on your dimensionals too hard so you can get them back off to make sure that you have it pretty even. As you can see, I didn't get it on quite so even that time because they are hard to get back up. Okay. I'm going to stand so I can see. I had one of these days at the beginning of the week. Everything I seem to cut and stick on the card was crooked <laughs> I couldn't get it right to save my life okay so now we're gonna do this sentiment and I don't think I pulled that sentiment out let's see here it is Let's see, did I? Nope, it's right here. And this I actually embossed. So we're going to hopefully get this on straight. Like I said, as you can see, I was struggling with getting that on. Some days I just can't cut or lay a straight line to save my life. And I'm just using Versamark and we're going to hope that I get this on here straight. I could actually use my Stamparatus, but I didn't pull it out. So let's just hope. It might be a little off. Not too bad. And then this is gold. And you want to make sure that you flick it pretty good 
just going to put a little bit more. Make sure it is not in any place that you don't want it. I'm going to close this up. And I am going to just disappear for a minute. You're not going to be able to hear me as I in, uh, heat this up. Okay, not too bad, but there's a couple spots I'm not really happy with. Some days you have it, some days you don't. Okay, so we're just going to move this into the middle of the screen. Lay this on. This is why I like the glue, because it just gives you a couple seconds to move it around and as that's drying you can see this little corner where it's curled let's see if i have a piece of spare paper here we're just going to grab one out of the garbage here we have little pieces that are up if you take a little piece of scrap paper Apply your glue and stick it in there and then hold it down and pull it out. It'll glue down for you. Same thing with this corner. We can do the same exact thing. Add a little bit of glue. A great lady taught me this trick. And then pull it out as you're pushing down on it and it sticks it down. Okay, so now we're going to, I changed to the red sheer ribbon. We're just going to create a bow. I'm going to make sure I cut enough. If anybody needs to know how to make a bow, you hold it between your thumb and your pointer. And then you're going to take your tail, wrap it around your finger, Lift your thumb and hold it down. Again, take your tail. Go through your fingers. Feed it back through your fingers underneath this part. And then with the tail, this little loop that you just created, you're going to tuck it in. And I'm all thumbs, but you're going to tuck it in this loop just like this i'm trying to make it so it's straight and then pull that tail out here it is and tighten it up grab your other tail just tighten that up pull it off your fingers it does get a little tight Make sure your little loops are just about the same size. You can pull on your loops to make sure that it's this right size. And then just cut your tails. And we're going to, let's see, where are my... That's the one thing I forgot to pull out. Look at that. My dots. Let's see. I have some up here. Okay. Got to roll the glue dots. And we're just going to grab a dot. 
put it down here at the bottom of the sentiment and stick on our bow. Like I said, you can pull on your little loops, puff up your ribbon. If it's covering your sentiment too much, you can always move it down. Glue dots are pretty forgiving. Okay, so for the inside of the card, for this one, I put a layer of DSP first. And this should be five and three eighths by four and an eighth. Because I wanted the inside to be a little fancy. And I did that twice. So we're just going to lay this layer down first. Making sure it's centered. And then we have a layer of red and white and strips to match the DSP. So we're just going to layer this. And again, I will have all the measurements in the group, a nice PDF for everybody in the group tomorrow. If you missed it, I do have it ready. It's just I have to add one more measurement. I have glue all over my fingers, so it's not moving. I hear my cat. Let's see if I can just trim this a little bit. I don't think I'm going to be able to. It's too small. Let's give it a shot. Okay, I think that's good. And we're just going to lay this across the bottom of this piece. And I'm going to glue it again. It just gives me a little bit of wiggle room. Just in case I mess up which is always a possibility. And we're just going to give that a second. And as you can see, I have a little bit over the edge. So we're just going to put this in here and trim it to give it a nice clean edge. And then we're going to glue this onto this layer before we put our twine on. So we're just going to attach this. Just like that. Clean that off. Grab my gold twine. Here it is right here. And we're just going to tie this in a bow. Now this twine frays a little bit, which is fine. But we're just going to, when I tie twine, I like to first put it in a knot. It just makes your bow tying a little bit easier. Cut that off higher bow and I don't save them but you can always save these edges um, for your full cards because it looks like when you put it on your card within your flowers it just looks like wheat the ends of wheat so it's a good thing to save to add a little decoration to your card I usually don't save them though. I have so much stuff all over. Okay. So with that tied, we are just going to add this to the middle of the card and call it done. 
And then we'll start on the next one, the gift card holder. And there we go. Like I said, I will post this tomorrow after I finish coloring so you can see that I did finish the bottom of the card. I hope you like it as much as I like creating them. Now we're going to do the gift card holder. It is a little different. Um, I did it so you could, so it looks like a little package. And when I did this ribbon, I was trying to retie it again, but I made it too short. But it has the cardinal on the front, and I wrapped a ribbon around it so it could be a package. And then when you open it up, the gift card pops up. So that makes it look, it's different, and it looks cute. Now when I do this, I'm going to have to step away to use, um, thanks, Nan. So we're going to start with the second card. Now this one is a little different where it is four and a quarter by 11 and then it is scored at four and a quarter, five and a half, because that would be your halfway mark, and six and three quarters. So what we're going to do first is fold it in half just like you were going to create a regular card because it is five and a half by four and a quarter. But from this score line to here is what you are going to have pop out of the card. So while I'm thinking about it, and I have this folded, I'm just going to grab the die from the um, stitch so sweetly, and I'm just going to cut out a little spot right on the fold of this card. Just give me a second. I can't wait until Stampin' Up! comes out with the little mini um, cut and emboss. And this way I can just keep it right there and do it right on camera. Not that anybody has to see, but at least you're not looking at a dead screen while I'm over here cutting things out. Okay. And I got it completely crooked, so we're going to try this one more time. See what I told tell you, told you about getting things straight. All right, I think this is good. If not, I'll have to go back to the drawing board. Okay, so I took it, and I did do it crooked at first, but I'm just going to, I just cut out the, this inner piece, and it still is a little crooked, with that die. And that's where your card is going to go. Now, I found that the gift card and is just a little bit wider than that spot. So, you're just going to have to cut an extra little slit to make sure the card is going to fit. And once that is cut, and I did it crooked, we're going to take some tearing tape. And as everybody knows, I have a very intricate and expensive little cutter here. It's the lid to my glue. We're just going to add some tearing tape to one side. Making sure you come pretty close to the edge. And what I do with my scissors, we're just going to grab these scissors. I 
I think my problem is I need to have my nails cut. I think they're just too long. They get to a point where they're just, you can't do anything. Okay, so we're just going to fold this back in half. Make sure you clean off your... <laughs> um, plates in your embossing machine okay so we're just going to fold it we're folding it in the opposite direction and now we are left with a card that is four and a quarter by four and a quarter but when you open it up the inside pops out and we're just going to stick this card. I could have used a larger die. But that one works pretty good. And then we're just going to do our layers. Now you don't have to create as many layers as I did for this. But I just wanted to give it a little fancy look. I'm using the Most Wonderful Time DSP again. And... This one, like I said, is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. This layer is four and an eighth by four and an eighth. And we're just going to glue this onto the front. Making sure it is centered. And again, I use the glue just to give me a little wiggle room. And then we're just going to put the DSP on. And the same thing. This is an eighth of an inch smaller, so it should be four by four. And this is the front of your card. And before we stamp, let's just open it up. And I, again, have layers, and I switched out the star paper because I ran out. So I'm using candy canes, and it is the same size layers. And I'm just doing the inside of the card, again, so it looks finished. I mean, if you're going to give this as a gift... It can be used to the recipient not only are they getting a gift card if they have a gift to give they can always reuse it all you'd really have to do is put a different piece of paper and glue it down and the recipient can use it to give it to the next person because it will be sturdy enough that you can get more than one use out of it okay so there are the inside layers we'll close that up so now, I know I still have to put that in the center. I have some circles from the layering circles, and this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to make sure I write this down so I can edit my PDF. But it looks like it is three and one eighth inch scallop circle. And then the white is about two and three quarters you don't have to use these exact sizes these are just the ones I happen to grab so for the real red circle all I did was grab my glue and added it to the top right corner I'm going to grab my scrap paper and go back to the branch. And I again am using the basic gray. 
and we're just going to stamp the branch just like that and I'm going to grab my blender and some real red ink and we're just going to blend out the edges just so it's not so stark white. I don't know, can you hear the TV? My husband has the TV on. He said, is it too loud for you? No, I think it's good. I don't know what he's watching. And then again, we're going to color this, and I'll do this quick. This is pretty much the same way we did the last one. And I'm not going to, like Nan mentioned, the coloring police are not going to come and take you away. If I was here by myself and I was going to color this, I would definitely go slow and take my time. Add a little more detail, maybe. And we're going to do the same thing with the berries. I'm still working on my coloring class. I'm hoping to have that done by October. I don't know, though. I've been so crazy busy. One day right after one, if it's not one thing, it's another during the day. And now, I'm, now I'm in the middle of fall cleaning and doing my windows and trying to get stuff ready before winter. So I guess I'll have to change my sleep schedule. Okay. So there's your berries. And like the other berries, you can always take a black marker and put those little dots or if you want a white um you can do a white dot for a highlight and this is the soft suede again and i'm keeping the dark this is the dark i'm keeping it to the left everything and the and the little twigs to the berries and to the leaves and then this is the light and then we're going to just do this on the right hand side and it just makes it look as if there is a highlight and again Let's just straighten that line out there. I would take a white pencil and just run it down the center. It just gives it a little bit more of a highlight. And then we're going to take this, and depending on what, which way you want those branches to face, because we're going to have the bird, the cardinal, I think we'll face it this way. We're going to pop this up. And let's hope we can get this on here. Get this on here straight. I'm going to stand from my squeaky chair. Just going to move it over a little. And that looks good. Then we're going to stamp this cardinal, and then I'm going to have to step away just to cut him out. Let me see what I did. There they are. So we're going to get this cardinal stamped. And I actually did stamp him in real red. And then there he is, nice, old, and beautiful. And then the sentiment is embossed. 
And here's my embossing powder. What the heck? Okay, let's try this Versamark. My Versamark just like got up and walked away. So we're just going to ink this up. Isn't that crazy? I don't know how this happens all the time. And this is the banner for the inside of the card. And we're just going to emboss it in gold. Because we do want it to match at least a little bit to the other card. And I'm just going to heat this up. And I really don't know what I did with that first mark. It's like it was here. All right, so. And then we're just going to grab, I'm going to grab these dies and die cut these little pieces. And I'll be right back. Clean the plates off so it doesn't leave any marks. Looks good. Let's see how this looks. Okay, not too bad. This one is a little off, but we're going to put that right here, and we're only going to glue it on the bottom of this piece. Just like this. Now for the cardinal, I'm just going to take my black marker and we're going to give him a black eye and then we're just going to put a ring around it because we want to see some of the red and some of the white and then I am just going to flick out Just gonna outline it so I don't get his beak. But we're just gonna flick out some black. And you could use a deeper purple or a blend. But I chose the black so it's nice and bold. And we're just gonna add those feathers because cardinals have dark around their faces just like that and then I'm going to just put a little white dot and he is also oh I did let me just take out that piece I also did line his feet Just to give it a little bit more color. Because Cardinal's feet, I do not believe, are red. So we're just going to add some glue. And the bird. And even when I explained on the PDF, I am going to put some dimensionals underneath the bird. But I don't want to do it until we put the ribbon on. Because I want to make sure that the ribbon has space so we can get this ribbon and I'm going to make sure I have enough
to tie a nice bow. But like I said, I don't want to put my dimensionals on until this is... We could do it now. So we'll just grab mini dimensionals. I'll grab my scissors because, of course, I don't know where my little pokey tool is. I could have a desk that is teeny tiny, this big. And I will for lose something for sure. No matter how big or small of an area I have, never fails. I have tried baskets. I have tried all kinds of different things. And I'm telling you, I don't even know what I did with that Versa mark. It was here, and now it's gone. Did I put it back? Nope. That's crazy. Okay. So now we're just going to tie a bow. I'm going to make sure we keep it over here on the card oh much better just gonna tie a nice little bow if you put your finger on the knot it keeps it nice and straight because you're gonna have to do it a few times Make sure when you pull on it and you get your tails down, make sure you use a nice pair of scissors when you cut your ribbon. Just going to cut it here and then cut it here. And there you have it. That is your quick and easy, and it wasn't so quick, I guess. But it would be if you had everything um, cut out and to assemble. And there you have it. This one, I'll have to get a new ribbon. But it is your pop-up gift card holder. And I tied that bow, and look what I forgot to put on the inside. For the inside, this is 3 by 3 and 2 and 7 eighths. And what I did with this is, again, I just distressed the edges with the real red. And you don't even have to have this. You don't have to add this if you don't want. Um... But it's just a place where you can put your to and from to make it, you know, a little easier. And we're just going to move that. And again, I'll put this in. So there you have it. I'm really sorry I wasn't able to see your comments tonight. And um, if I find my Versamark pad, I'll let you know. I know it has to be here. So have a great night. I hope you enjoyed these cards. I'll have the PDF posted in the group tomorrow. Um, it'll give all the dimensions and the products that are used. And I will... See you. Oh, here it is. I'll see you next week. I hope you like them. If you'd like to join my newsletter, go over to galfridaystamping.com. All my links are across the top of the blog, my store, uh, the PDFs that you can purchase, and sign up for my newsletter. I also give free PDFs on my newsletter every week. Um, every two weeks. I haven't been posting it every week. So have a great night. I'm so happy that everyone was able to join me tonight. And I'll see you during the week. 
Have a great night. Thanks, Nan, for helping me out. I'll talk to you soon. You too, Em. Night. Bye-bye.